Program, but I'm not yet in SLPP yet. Oh, yeah. One country, one people, one people. One country. Now we are well seated. <laughs> North America. <laughs> North America. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Please permit me to pay my humble respect to our ambassador, yeah. Ambassador White, yeah. and our newly appointed ambassador to Saudi Arabia, yeah. Ambassador Mohammed Bai, yeah. the regional women's leader, our honorable members of parliament here present, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon again. I am humble when I'm in front of you. I'm always humble. When the women call, I don't have a choice but to answer. Your women's leader called and asked that I should be here today. And I said, I'll think about it. But when the women's leader called, you know that's an order. And I have to come. So I'm very humble. I'm here with my sister from Namibia and she will join us this evening. Today, this afternoon, she wanted us to be SLPP. And then in the evening, she will join us as Africans. We support one another and we will celebrate one another. But I want to say again, one country, one people, one, people, one country, one Fatima. <laughs> oh boy. You know, I had all of this dance routine planned for this morning. And I had my entrance ready for this morning and then you have people calling you from all over the place and telling you that there's somebody coming from Haiti to come in <laughs> you know the reason for all of this threat is because nobody is threatening somebody who is doing nothing <laughs> You don't go after someone who does nothing. Yes. If I was not the pain, they would not look for a medication. <laughs> but if it's for SLPB, I want to assure you, no voodoo. No juju. It doesn't work. Because what people fail to understand, I am mother Bio by marriage. My name is Fatima Jenna. And you just need to Google that to so know that I sell juju. I sell juju. I am a supplier of juju. So you only have to negotiate with my own juju power. Before you enter this place. <laughs> so please, don't worry too much. You think I will leave to Tim without my own food? <laughs> Not possible. But you know, I'm saying all of this just for us to have fun. Because life is too short to just be miserable all the time. Why would you want to use Juju on me? When the God that I serve is as mightier as the world itself. You know, I know the last word in the Holy Quran. So before I leave my house, I call upon my God and that my angels of protection will arrive and they are there before me. 
So I am really not scared of juju or voodoo or whatever. I'm only making fun. Because when you are dealing with idiots, you have to tell them they are idiots. Today we are here for serious business. We are talking about the Women's Council of North America. We are talking about a formidable group. A group that has made so much changes into our party structure. The women who have served, and this time the women refuse to be silenced. The opportunity we have today is an opportunity that we can actually ride upon and become whoever we want to become in our society. We have a president who believes women should be given an opportunity. And this opportunity is here in front of us. It is for all of us to make use of this opportunity. It is for me and you to see each other as equals. And it is for me and you to hold on to one another and pull each other up rather than pull each other down. Because we now have a platform. We have a platform we can speak from. The Dewey Bill is for us. And the benefits of the Dewey Bill, we might not feel it today, you can't feel it right now. But in 10 years to come, I promise you, our country is going to be transformed in a way even Satan will want to be a friend of the SLP. Well, it is nice to be in power. It is very nice to be in power. When you are in the opposition, you will not understand how difficult it is to be in opposition and to be in opposition. So while we are celebrating, we should also remember that the space we occupy today, somebody else wants that space. And we should be thinking about what is it that we need to do to keep ourselves in that space. This is not about Fatima anymore. Because the next time we have an election, I will not be your first lady. You'll be our president. <laughs> you see, these are the reasons why they say bring you voodoo or voodoo. I'm telling you. But with all serious note, the next time we have an election, whatever happens, I am not going to be your first lady. But the time we have together, let us utilize this time and make a difference for our people. Let us use this time to, make, to change the lives of our people. I have one focus, and my focus is to make sure every woman in that country has a space to breathe. Every child in Sierra Leone should be able to walk freely and not be scared of what will happen to them. When we give our children the dignity that they deserve to have, when they grow up, they become women of substance. When we allow our children to be deprived of the opportunities they are supposed to get, we will still be crying and be telling stories. That means me and you, we did not do anything when we had the opportunity. So our job, please, I keep saying this, not because I'm too pessimistic. Not everybody has to like Fatima. And as we sit here, not every one of you like me anyway. But one thing I am sure of, one thing I am very sure of, every one of you wants SAPP to remain in power. Now, if you want SAPP to remain in power, you have to do what will keep us in power. There is no politics. I mean, go and ask Joe Biden. He's sweating right now. If you don't have money in politics, you're in trouble. And we can't wait until 2028 to start looking for money for 2028. We need to start now. We have to put our house in order and start to plan for 2028. What I will not advise any one of you to start doing right now, that will be so politically foolish, 
is for you to start supporting somebody. That will be a waste of time. If you can eat the candidate's money, eat it free. But as it is, we have a sitting president. A sitting president that is working for all of us. And I feel it's an insult for people to, you know, less than one year of President Madabio, everybody want to be president. And when people want to be president, they don't focus in developing our country, they focus in preparing themselves for being president. So if you really want to be president in Madabio's government, resign and start your campaign now, but don't stay in government and be using the space that was created for you by Marabio and our vote. Because we have people calling now, people are now building camps. No one is talking about fixed salon. Now, the SFPP Women's Wing in North America are talking about fixed salon. For me, that is priority. Because it doesn't matter how much money we have, my people. If Marabio does not succeed, we do not have a platform to campaign for the next candidate. So Marabio has to succeed for the next candidate to be a success story. So if we now have people coming all over, everybody saying, you know, I want to be president, it is well and good to be president. But don't water down the status of presidency. Because the kind of people that are actually coming out now to say they want to be president for me is an insult for our party. I'm saying it because I'm not going to come back to those people to vote for Mother Bill. It's not contesting. So please, buy your time. Wait till, until you see everyone. Then assess. The person that you know will do the best thing on behalf of the party. There is no way to go behind a candidate that is not popular. Because a candidate that is not loved by the people, you have to invest more to make people like that person. And the time you will have is one month to make that candidate lovable. Unfortunately, one month is not enough for a candidate to be lovable in Sierra Leone. But what we can do is build upon Marabio's legacy and then use that legacy to promote whoever we will have in the future. So let us focus. Because Marabio's legacy is not Marabio's legacy. Marabio's legacy will be SLPP's legacy. So when you speak, you speak on behalf of the SLPP. When you ask people to support, you will tell them, my party told you we are going to do A, we are going to do B, and we have done it. But if you don't have that platform to stand upon, I'm sorry, my people, we will also come to the drawing board in opposition. And that is not a place I want to be. And that is not a place you want to be at all. So please, I'm saying this because we have distraction now. But the reality is, our success depends on Madabio's success, and Madabio's success depends on us yeah. together. He cannot do it on his own, we'll have to do it together. So please, again, for those people who have started speaking on behalf of uh, who I am supporting, Support your support, but support in your heart and let us focus in building our legacy first. <laughs> Women's Council, again, we are going to be having an election. Because SFPP, we are so democratic to a point where <laughs> even when they write democracy, now we spell the D first. <laughs> But that's the reality. Because we'll follow everything to the T. But what I would advise you this time, now you search in your own conscience. To have somebody lead you is one thing. 
to have a true leader is a different thing. So don't have sentiment on issues that you know will not give you the leeway to go forward. Your leader should be the true rep representative of every one of you. So when that time comes, don't say because this person who is contesting is from my own region, or my own chapter, I will support only my chapter. Even though you know that chapter, the person you put forward will not do anything in advancing the progress of this group. So please, I am not here. You know the last time when I came, I campaigned for Aminata Amara publicly. I am saying now, please, when you are going to choose your leader, check and ask yourself, what has this person done for this region? You don't have to be a leader to contribute to your region. You don't have to be a leader to serve your region. The fact that you people made time to come here is your own contribution and service to your party. The fact that you are here, I know how difficult it is for you to leave everything you are doing. Today you should be working. Maybe today. I used to live in Europe. It's holidays and weekend that they pay us double time. For you to leave all of that and be here, it's your own service for the party. Because you are not only using your time, you are using your money, you are losing money, and you are coming to spend more money. That is expenditure to your party. So when that time comes, don't say, well, you know, this person is part of my chapter. If I vote, if I don't vote for her, then go go wait yourself for me. My dear, if that person will not make your life better in your chapter, focus on the person that you know, the devil you know is better than the ghost that you haven't seen yet. Please. There's going to be the time for all of this. My job, again, the last time, I fall out with uh, North America. And I know I say it as it is. My fallout with North America was the fact that I decided to support a women's leader, in which was our foreign. And honestly, I believe today, for you that did not believe in that mission the last time, you owe me an apology. Because she has served our party, and her leadership style is beyond. So, not a degree no more the post is zero. That Kukri woman has been the best women's leader we have in Sierra Leone. And so please, if you haven't made up your mind again, this time I'm campaigning for her. Because she is going to run again. And she deserves. You know why? Leadership is not about the top. How many of us are at the top? What are the numbers that are at the top? Leadership is about the grassroots. Leadership is somebody who goes down to her people. Somebody who the people believe in. Somebody when someone dies, they're there. When somebody is sick, they're there. When somebody gets married, they're there. When somebody needs something, they're there. That is what you call leadership. Leadership is not about the person that wears the best perfume and every time they want to be at the front with a mic. That is not leadership. That is show off. And really, I don't think we should be looking for show off people. Please. You want that person that is willing to wear flip flop and be in the quarters with your people. You want that person that is willing to take herself out of her own vehicle and give to you to go and solve your own problem. That is who you want. So please, she's not here. I mean, I don't want to say the reason. I mean, in fact, I will say her. 
Because of this, your July 4th problem, her passport was in the American embassy. They said July 4th, they know they open. So, by the time she received her passport yesterday, me, I've left her. And if she still leaves Sierra Leone to come, she will only arrive here on the 7th. The program will end on. So I said, Madam, I beg, please stay there and wave to us. We will come to accept your wave. But she really wanted to be here and she really wanted to celebrate with you people. And I know if she was here, this place would have been a totally different place. Because her own style of leadership is absolutely and totally different from me. I mean, she's not even, the word finesse does not look like our foreign. If she was here, she would be dancing from that point to this point, from that end to that end. She would have known everyone's name here right now and she would be calling you by your name. That is the kind of women's leader we have. So, please, you know who your leaders are. Me, I know Sabina, what are the one for can contest now in our region? But when that time comes, Look for the person where you know, say where you call them, it will pick your phone call. <laughs> Look for the person where you know, say where you tell her your problem, your problem, they become in your problem. <laughs> and look for the person where you know, say if he get the opportunity for see president, you will carry go laces. <laughs> So Lord, do so they tell you say, I don't hear it. Or I didn't think about them. No campaign again. I don't do it you. What person believe in you? You know they think about them. In fact, when you tell her, they begin to tell you solution. So there is nothing called secret service in politics. Yeah, now you will talk and jaran jaran. And what do they say? In politics, not three are there. You know, na recognition, na reward, and here waiting at the last one, respect. So na then me can say when you call the person, not to when election the near now. That's it now. Hey sister, auntie, uncle, what we want power us? We need don't have grown up. Where we get power? Then you see our true color. So please, please, because it will be nice, it will be nice when you call me Fatima, let me be willing to come with joy. Because I can still say this, so even when you get, if you keep Aminata, or if you decide for bring a new person, I will still remain the first lady of the Republic of Syria until 2028. And the leadership where you get, now how the leadership they now so the person they access to Mother Thank you. Because I'm a gatekeeper. So, Anybody where they give story, I will tell and say, oh, it's a story, story, it's a story. Please. Now, this conference, I know we were supposed to talk about the Gimme Bill, but we now have the most exciting bill. We don't pass, because the Gimme Bill is about us, women. But the Child Rights Act is about our children.
Two weeks ago, Parliament passed a Child Rights Act for us. Both APC and SLPP supported that bill with their life. And in fact, they did not vote. They passed the bill. Four days ago, four days ago, with the support of other African force ladies, they all flew into Sierra Leone to be by His Excellency the President while he signed that bill. And today we can proudly say the prohibition of child marriage is now an act and it is a law and that anybody that goes after my children, I'll come after you. So you people that are here from the diaspora, I believe diaspora is the fifth economy in Africa. Please, start talking to your people in those villages and tell them, Fatima said, hands off our girls. And I swear to my life, if it will cost me my life, it will have to cost me my life. I will follow anybody that married a child in that country and I will follow you to the end. But with all of you, every one of you, that money that you send to Africa, it gives you the power to tell your people what to do also. Please start to educate our people. We are not putting this ban because we want to stop them of enjoying sex. We are banning them because we have too many children dying of pregnancy. It might not be your child, but you don't know when it could be your child. So please, when you talk to your family back home, tell them to support this bill. Tell them to propagate this bill. Tell them to advocate on behalf of the people. I was so pleased yesterday when I heard every someone in Sierra Leone was on that bill. The imams have shown that they are with us. I'm waiting to see what happens tomorrow because tomorrow will be the first Sunday since the past since the president signed that bill. Yesterday I had text messages from different quarters telling me our sermon today in the mosque is about the bill. And I'm very proud as a Sierra Leonean that our Muslim folks have now taken upon themselves to champion that propagation. I will now wait and see what happens tomorrow on Sunday. And when I go back, I will go back to our custodians of our law, our traditional leaders, all the chiefs. I will invite them. I will talk to them. I have already done this. They've started implementing even before government has passed the law. The law now gives them more power to do as much as they can because they already have a bylaw on this but I will still go back and hand over the bill to them. And I'm here this afternoon to hand over the bill to you people and say, please, help me make this work for our children. America is not Sierra Leone. You know, when you were singing the American National Anthem, you said to Ambassador, are you sure you are free? <laughs> And that's the reality, my people. I can sing any national anthem, but I still know I am not free. Until Sierra Leone is free, I am not free. Until Sierra Leone is economically free, I am not free. Until Sierra Leone is democratically free, I am not free. Until the women are given the space they are supposed to have in Sierra Leone, I still believe I am not free. So together, let us make this thing work. I know we are all American citizens. I'm not American citizen. I'm not a part of them. I know you people are American citizens, but I also know you have so much that you can take to our country, Sierra Leone. For you that are in the medical field, I'm not a medical person, but for you that are in the medical field, 
I believe you followed one of the biggest transformation at the 34 hospital. Yes. Yes. Please, when you are in Sierra Leone and you wanted to serve, that hospital is for the to a state-of-the-art hospital so that that hospital will represent not only Sierra Leone but our region. Yeah. Let that hospital stand as the hospital for the Mano River Union. Yeah. For four years, all I have done, every penny I have, I have put into that hospital. I could have built myself a house. I could have built a house for my mother. I could have built a five-star hotel, yeah. even though they have given me hotel every part of the world and I receive it. But I could have done all of those things. And I'll tell you, not one single penny of a government is in that hospital. And I'll say it anywhere. Nobody in that government has given me one bag cement to put in that hospital. So now in the way they talk, I fit I bad. Because I know money that is given to me that I could look good for myself and make my family better. I have deprived everybody and say we have to give to our country. If there is nothing, if I don't do anything for Sierra Leone, let that hospital be the one that you will remember me for. It doesn't matter how I explain the hospital, you will not understand unless you are there. We now have, a, I mean, a first-class pediatric ward. We have a female ward. We have a, a, a male ward. We have a center of excellence that is dedicated just for gender violence people. We have a state-of-the-art administrative department so that everybody who works at 34 will be in 34. We built a school of nursing so that we will train our nurses for them to, when they finish, you know, whatever training they acquire at that school, we will choose the best and they will start to work at 34. They have a, a starting point. And as I'm speaking to you, we are building a state of the art partner with American University. We're building a university next to 34. And that university will have their qualification from the American International. And the university will train our doctors and pharmacists. So 34 will, have, will be a teaching hospital. We will train our doctors, our nurses, and our pharmacists. All of them will be trained in 34. So please, very soon, we will hand over the hospital. I will, um, of course, myself and His Excellency, the President, we will hand over to the state because 34 is a government property. So again, this is to say to you, uh, we were not building 34 for our own private consumption because it's not going to be run as a private hospital. It is a government hospital, but one that will serve poor people. It will be a state-of-the-art hospital, but still serve our poor people. People don't have to leave Sierra Leone to go to Ghana. People don't have to leave Sierra Leone to go to South Africa. They don't have to leave Sierra Leone to come to America or London. And how many of our people can actually afford that? So we are bringing medicine to our people in 34. And with all of you, me not a medical person. If you show me needle now, I will run. <laughs> I am not a medical person. But because I am so, so addicted to what is going on within the medical system and everything that I am advocating for has something to do with health issues, I've gone back to university. I am actually a student here in America. I am at the UCLA. I'm actually doing my master's on public health at UCLA. 
this is just for me. I want to remove myself from being a journalist or from being an actress or from being Maribel's wife and just understand what you know about the medical system. I don't just, it's not for me to be a doctor. I just want to understand the public health system, how it is run, how it is managed. What are the I mean, consequences when somebody make mistake? What are the things that you need to do to make sure whatever is below here can come right at the top? And I can only know that if I go back to school. So I've decided to go back to school. It will take me two years, but it will be a fulfilling two years for me. But at the main time, please, you have the ideas. You are already serving here. You already know what we need to do. Don't wait till I finish two years and come back. <laughs> come and help us. Let us transform our country. Thank you. Please, I'm asking every one of you who are into the medical field, and if you have contacts that can help us with whatever, there is nothing in the medical situation right now that we don't need. If 34 don't need it, uh, what's your hospital's name? <laughs> Pamuma Hospital needs it. <laughs> you know? Uh, do you have hospital in your... Potlock or hospital? Potlock or you have state of the art hospital? Yes, yeah? The one that you have in your constituency. Uh -huh. So, you have honorables here. Uh, Abaji? Uh -huh. Which one do you? Pujo. You see? North America, see how many MPs you have. Do you know? You have Awa here from Pujo. You have uh, uh, Antirubi here from Kenema. And now you have Mrs. Pesima here from Kukloko. So, and then we have Fofana also in Cambia. He's not here right now. And this is not America product. So please, whatever you have, if it does not suit our hospital in 34, believe you me, it will work for our constituencies. Tell us. We will find a way to take it to Freetown. When you have the opportunity, please, don't say, I don't have the first ladies. I don't come back now publicly. Already. So this is a plea to every one of you. Whenever you think you have the opportunity or you know somebody who could help us, just contact the ambassador and he will reach out to me immediately. In fact, I don't do protocol between me and people. I talk directly to people. So if you talk to ambassador, say, ambassador, I beg, I want to give me number to very give first lady. And he knows he has to give that number to me. Because he's not to be sexy. <laughs> you understand? He's my ambassador. And his job is to be able to connect me with people. That is his job. So please, if there is anything that you think you want to do for us, just reach out to him and then send your number. I'll call you myself. And then we'll take it from there. Okay. Yeah. So I know we have a panel discussion. I know we are going to have a panel discussion and we are going to talk about the bill. But I also am uh, giving time that 4 p.m. I have to not because I want to leave. But I just have another conference that uh, that's the reason why Monica is not here. Because as you know, from here we are heading to New York where. Um, I think about 35 first ladies are coming for a meeting and we're going to have a three-day meeting at the Ford Foundation in Columbia University. So we have a 4 p.m. Um, Zoom meeting for that. So if I happen to leave in between, it's not because I want to disrespect you, it's just because I have other engagement that I have to honor, but I'll be with you in the evening and it's party time. Let me thank you again for everything. Thank you for your support to the SLPP. Thank you for your love to all of you. And I truly appreciate every one of you. May God bless you. Thank you.